Now we move on to one of the most common infectious diseases. If you report the number of sexually transmitted diseases over time, you can see the chlamydia has risen almost tenfold since 1988. Now, some of this, you can see that, and here's the blue line. This is the year in the bottom. This is the number of reported cases. You can see it starts at around 180,000. It is now, in 2019, up to 1.8 million cases per year. This is a significant problem of chlamydia infection. Now, part of this is probably that we're getting better at detecting and reporting it. But another part of it is, is there's just more infectious disease. So let's talk about chlamydia. Pathogen and properties. It is the most ubiquitous pathogen on the face of the globe. Chlamydia in general, not just the sexually transmitted disease. Chlamydia causes infections in organisms ranging from mollusks to humans. Most specialize in chronic infections, infections that go on for a long period of time. The properties of this organism are, it is an obligate intracellular parasite of eukaryotes. It cannot exist on its own. So it's almost more like a virus. It's a bacterium, but its behavior and its infection is more like a virus. It has no cell wall peptidoglycan, and it's extremely temperature sensitive. It grows inside host cells, so it's not surprising that it's used to a very consistent environment. Here is a picture of chlamydia, and you can actually see a clump of cells inside a host cell right here. If you look at the United States and you look at the incidence of chlamydia, you can see that while you find it everywhere in the United States, most it's most commonly concentrated in the southern United States. I would posit that part of this problem is because of the poor sex education in those places. Let's talk more specifically about chlamydia trachomatis, which is the pathogen that causes a sexually transmitted disease. It is, again, one of the most prevalent infections in the U.S. One complication is pelvic inflammatory disease, and this is one of the most common causes of sterility in women. The bacterium can also cause eye infections and respiratory disease and joint infections. The graphic on the right here shows the rate of sexually transmitted infection with chlamydia per 100,000 individuals in the United States. And not surprisingly, adults from 15 to 30 account for the vast majority of cases. But I will note that it does not, there is some incidence in all age groups. Chlamydia, the disease course. Damage is caused by growth. This organism does not have or create any toxins. Chlamydia will first infect epithelial cells of the cervix. Obviously, this is infection in women. Uh, the bacteria send in, in, in the endometrium and fallopian tubes, right? So those first infect in the cervix. They then go into the endometrium and fallopian tubes. And a strong inflammatory response in the fallopian tubes against the disease causes the scarring and occlusion, which leads to sterility. Okay, let's talk about the pathogenesis. And in this case, the pathogenesis is growth of the pathogen and the damage is caused by the immune response's reaction to this growth. So first of all, there's two types of, of bodies for cl the chlamydia. There is an elementary body and the other body is a reticulate body. The elementary body is a transmissible form. It is metabolically inert and it has all sorts of adhesins on its outer surface that stick to the host and take it up. So it will bind to the outside cell, its endocyte host. So this will sti simulate its being brought in and it's a process that's similar to phagocytosis except once inside the endosome vesicles, they interfere such that the lysosome doesn't fuse and there's no acidification. So now they have this little environment that they can exist in. And at this point, they turn into a reticulate body. The reticulate body is 
the replicate replicative form it makes copies of itself so it will replicate some and at this point chlamydia has two options it can then make a whole bunch more and turn itself into elementary bodies and leave the cell and find right make make more turn into elementary bodies and then leave the cell and look for other host cells to infect or alternatively it can adopt a non-infectious non-replicating persistent form and that's what's shown here this is done when the immune system is active and actively attacking cells so it shuts down any replication that it's doing and kind of hides from the immune system eventually the chlamydia will reemerge as reticulate bodies and begin replicating again diagnosis and treatment diagnosis can be difficult diagnosis in males isn't too difficult because uh, they they will exude pus from their urethra so it's really common right it will be found in the urine in men uh, women may not notice as much because uh, the discharge isn't that distinctive however a swab of the cervix and then culturing will reveal the bacterium uh, so it is analyzed when you test for this organism you'll take a swab of the cervix or you'll take urine in men you can culture it you can do a microscopic examination you can, there's also an antigen test for this there's also a nucleic acid amplification test or NAT and what this is is a PCR of the 16S ribosomal RNA or OMP-A which is a porn on the organism so you can test for that that way if chlamydia is diagnosed the treatment is simple and straightforward with azithromycin or doxycycline doxycycline is nice because it can penetrate into all sorts of tissues right that is it for chlamydia.